Alright, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you how you can create simple gears in FreeCAD. I recently made a similar video on how to do this in Fusion 360 and I received a few comments on how to do the same thing in FreeCAD. First thing I'll say is that FreeCAD doesn't have as many advanced tools as you get in Fusion 360. So you are a lot more limited in terms of what you can do. If for example you're looking to design a helical gear or a worm drive gear, that's going to be a lot more tricky and is likely going to require some other tutorial. That being said, I'm always looking to learn, and if I do figure that out, I will make a video about it. So let's jump into it, and I'll show you some basic gears. So we're in FreeCAD here, and as always, the first thing we do when we're creating something new is we create a new part, and we make it active. So we're going to click on this little button here. That gives us a new part, and straight away I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to right-click, rename. I'm going to call that Gear 1. Now as soon as we create a new part, we always create a new body. So let's go up to the workbench tool. We're going to switch to the part design workbench. Switch back to our model tab. Make sure you've got your gear one part selected. And then click on this little blue icon that says create a new body and make it active. That now gives us a body that we can manipulate and create 3D objects out of. So with the body selected, we're going to come up to part design. And right at the bottom, we've got an option here called involute gear. Click on that. That'll take us to a new window like this, and you'll see in front of you basically what looks like a gear, but you haven't had to sketch anything, and it's basically already a template there for us. This is really useful because generally gears or spur gears are always going to follow the same pattern, and you just want to tweak a few parameters, so it saves you having to redesign these things over and over. So on the left here we've got a few parameters. You can see we've got number of teeth, module, pressure angle, and a couple of other options in there as well. Now, these parameters are always going to come down to personal preference, but I'll give you a rough overview of what they are and how you can use them. The first one is pretty obvious, number of teeth. That obviously defines how many teeth are around the outside of your gear. So module, you can actually get pretty technical on what exactly module is, but all you basically need to know is that module will define how big or small your gear is essentially going to be. Really large gears tend to have a higher module, and tiny gears have a smaller module. Pressure angle, again, you can play around with this if you get technical, but generally, when you're working with 3D printed gears, you're always gonna leave this at 20 degrees, because after a while anyway, plastic gears tend to wear away, and it becomes kind of irrelevant. As general advice, I'd leave it at 20 degrees. High precision, that's an obvious one, we're just gonna leave that at true. And external gear, what this basically is asking you is, are you meshing with gears that are going to be on the outside of this gear. If we change external gear to false, you'll see that the shape of our gear slightly changes. And with this particular shape, what we could do is create internal gearing. So let's say we wanted to create gears that are smaller than this one and have them all mesh with each other inside this gear. That's what we'd use. In this case, we're not doing that. We're going to leave it as true because we are meshing with gears that are going to be external to this gear. So let's put some of these parameters in and actually create something. For this, I'm going to create number of teeth. I'm just going to put it as 36. And module, we are currently set to 2.5. Now, let's say, for example, we're working on a project and we need a gear that is going to be 50 millimeters in diameter. Now, this is where you'll see that module is merely a ratio between the diameter and the number of teeth that we've got. Going back to our example, if we change this, uh, we need a 50 millimeter gear, 50 millimeter diameter. All we do is divide that by the number of teeth. So 50 divided by 36, we'll just click away from it, and you can see our module is 1.39. And that's all there is to it. Pressure angle, as I said, we're gonna leave that, and we're gonna leave these set to true. Now we're just gonna hit okay. And notice nothing really changed there, and that's because we have to go about this like we normally would with the sketch. So we're gonna select body, and up here on the menu, remember we need to pad so that we can take this sketch from the 2D workspace into the 3D workspace. Pad a selected sketch, make sure you've got body selected, and you can see that has now extruded that for us. I'm just gonna leave this at 10 millimeters, and if you rotate around, you can see now we've got something that kind of does resemble a gear. So in this case, you can set your width depending on what you need, and then you can just hit OK. So next thing I'm going to show you is how you can add a hole to the gear so that maybe you could place it on a shaft. So if you remember in the previous tutorials, what I showed you was how you can just keep using sketching to make changes to your 3D object. Now that's one way to do it. And in FreeCAD, you can just stick to the 3D workspace if you're just looking to kind of create a rapid prototype or a really quick design. You don't have to always go through that sketching process. 
Now it's always good practice too. 99% of the time I do stick with sketching just because it's more defined and you have more control over what's going on. But just as an example, I'll show you if we change to the part workbench. So up here we're gonna change the part. Now let's say I wanna add a hole to this. Up here there's a little button called create a cylinder. So make sure you've selected your gear and we're gonna create a cylinder. So that cylinder's been created for us and if you look on the part tree, you'll notice that it's placed it outside of our active part. And this is a little bit frustrating as something I've noticed about FreeCAD. By default, it just seems to put your other shapes outside of the part, which just doesn't make sense. And it's really untidy. So what you wanna do is click on the cylinder, drag it over to gear one. And you'll see that I'll just place it inside of your part here. So if you minimize it, it keeps everything nice and tidy by having it nested inside of that part. It should do this by default but for some reason it doesn't. If we click on cylinder, down the bottom we've got a couple of parameters. The radius here is set to two. I'm gonna change that to five, hit enter, and you can see it's changed the diameter there of the cylinder. Now here's the cool part, we can actually create a cut between two shapes. So if we select the body first and then hold control on the keyboard and select cylinder so that we've got both parts selected, up here on the menu, around about the middle, you'll see this option to make a cut out of two shapes. If you click that, you'll notice that hole in the middle, that cylinder is now gone and it's cut it away from the gear. And you can see that was relatively quicker to do than if we'd had to have gone through, created a sketch uh, and gone through the traditional process. We've achieved the same result. We can still edit the cylinder. We can do all those good things, but it's just a little bit quicker. I find this way tends to be better if you're designing something standalone, something small, and you need it in relatively short time. Again, in the component tree, notice this place cut outside of our part. Again, click and drag, keeps it all nice and clean. And remember, you can go back in and make changes to all this stuff. So notice the little drop downs here. So if we click on cut, you'll see there's a body in there. Click on pad. And if we wanted to go back and make changes to the gear, we can just double click involute gear. We're right back here and we can make changes. We can hit okay. And we're straight back here. So if you ever need to go back through, you can easily track through all these things and make those changes. And that's why it's important that you keep them nested. I can't emphasize that enough. So now that we've created our first gear, let's go ahead and create the second one. And there's something else to be learned here now as well. Remember, whenever we add something new to our design, a new part, a new piece of the design, it's always good practice to create a new part and make it active. So we don't wanna create a second gear inside of this part with our first gear. That would be bad practice. So again, what we do, we select our workspace here, we click on create a new part and make it active. Now you can see underneath gear one, we've got a brand new part. We can rename this, I'm just gonna call it gear two. And now this is a completely separate entity to gear one. We can make our own changes to this gear and not have it affect the previous one. It's just a lot more manageable and a lot more efficient. Don't forget as well that when you create a new part, you also need to create a new body. So let's switch back to the part design workspace. We're gonna make sure we've selected gear two, create the new body, and there it is straight in there. Remember as well, we can show and hide different parts of the design by clicking on the, the part and hitting the space bar. And you can see we can toggle between show and hide. In this case, we're gonna hide that gear because it's gonna be in the way otherwise. And uh, we're just gonna focus on gear two. So with gear two active here, we're gonna click on body. Once again, we're gonna go up to part design in blue gear and we're back here on this menu. Now last time we had 36 teeth and for this example I'm gonna show you a two to one gear ratio. So we're gonna half that and we're gonna go with 18 teeth. Now this is extremely important when we're talking about the module, even though we've got a different number of teeth, that means the gear is obviously gonna be smaller and in order for the gears to mesh and operate together properly, the module has to be exactly the same. If you change the module, they will not mesh and it will not work. So if you've already forgotten what the module for the previous one was, you just hit OK and I'll show you how you can see it. If you go back to gear one, track through your little component tree, into body, double click on the previous involute gear, and you can see in there, our previous module was 1.39. So that's it, cancel. We're gonna go back now to our gear two. Same thing, you can drop down through the trees, hit involute gear, and we need to set our module to be exactly the same. So we're gonna enter 1.39. Pressure angle also has to be the same. We leave that at 20 degrees, and these other settings also have to be the same. So let's hit okay, and we now have our second gear. 
again we're gonna have to pad this so we select our involute gear come up to pad last time we did 10 millimeters so you want to do the same hit ok we're also going to add, add a hole to this like we did before. So let's come back to the part workspace. Select the cylinder. Again, that adds a cylinder there for us. Remember in the part tree, drag it up to the top over gear two so that you keep it nested. Click on cylinder. We're going to make that the same radius as before, which was five. Hole looks a little big, but it's just for demonstration. And now we're going to create a cut between two bodies. So remember, select the body first, then select the cylinder come up to this little icon, make a cut out of two shapes, and there we go, we've got our second gear. If we minimize our tree back down, and we show gear one, you can now see that we do in fact have two gears here, but obviously they're overlapping, because anything you create in FreeCAD generally is always centered at the origin, and we need to move one of these gears, so we're gonna move gear two. So what I'll do now is show you how you can calculate the correct distance that you need to move one of these gears in order for them to mesh properly. It's actually pretty easy, we just use a simple equation and we plug the numbers in. So if you select gear two here, you'll notice in the bottom left, there'll be a little table and there's a bunch of parameters in there. If you can't see them, notice there are two tabs in the bottom left, you've got view and data. Make sure you select data. In there you will have a drop down called placement and another one called position, and you can see coordinates in there x, y, and z. We're gonna move one of these gears in the x axis ensure that our meshing distance is correct. So I'll put the equation up on the screen and I'll put it in the comments and the description as well. But it's super easy to follow and I'm gonna go through it with you now. So we're gonna click on the X position here. Uh, we're simply gonna start with two brackets, open and closed. And we're gonna take the module of the gears, which was 1.39. We're gonna multiply it by the number of teeth in the first gear plus the number of teeth in the second gear. So we can create another bracket that was 36 teeth in the first gear plus 18 teeth in the second gear. And then we're gonna divide the whole thing by two and just hit enter. And notice what that's done here. It's moved the smaller gear over to the right, but notice how it's moved it in the correct distance. That's just a simple equation that you can use that makes this a lot easier than trying to sort of judge it by eye. And this way, at least you know that they'll be working properly and at maximum efficiency. But notice that we're looking here and it doesn't look quite right, yeah? So we need to rotate this smaller gear a little bit so that they look, they at least look like they're meshing properly. So again, if we click gear two, down here under placement, we've got another parameter called angle. If we click on that, we can do another simple equation here. So we're gonna take 360 which is 360 degrees. We're gonna divide that by the number of teeth, which was 18. Again, we're gonna put this all in brackets and divide the whole thing by two. And there we go. That is our two gears meshed correctly and ready to be used, ready to be 3D printed. If we rotate around, you can see that the gears look really good. It all looks great. That's basically it. I hope you found this very useful. Let me know down in the comments below what you think and what you're gonna be using these for. I'm always interested and I'm always reading the comments. So let me know, and if there's also any tutorials that you wanna request, leave them in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do. As I said at the start of the video, I'm still learning FreeCAD myself. So if I figure out how to do some of the more complicated gears like helical, herringbone, and worm drive, I'll make a tutorial separately for those as well. So that's it for this one. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.